So it's been almost one year since we started renovating this house and I can't wait to show you guys what it currently looks like now. But as you can see, we're like nowhere near done. The floors are still waiting to come in and let me see what else. We still don't have some of our fixtures and there's imperfections here and there. But for the most part, the house has come such a long way. And I think we should be about two to three weeks out from actually finishing. Hopefully. <laughs> um, so without further ado, let's get on with the show. First, let's visit the kitchen. This is truly the heart of our home and the biggest undertaking in this whole project. This was what the kitchen looked like before, and this is what it looks like now. As you can see, we tore down the load-bearing wall, installed a waterfall kitchen island, and added floating shelves, pendant lights, and more. Let me take you through the fun details. I think one of my favorite parts of the kitchen is this seamless phone charger. I got it off of Amazon and asked my GC to install it. You can also press it for more charging outlets. How cool is that? As for the cabinets, we went with solid wood, shaker style cabinets for that farmhouse modern look. Here are the cabinet handles that I currently have. They're a bit too bright for my liking, so I might exchange them for antique brass ones instead. What do you think? As for our backsplash, I chose a 5x5 zellage tile for a bit of a rustic touch. You'll see zellage tiles all over our house because I love this look. There's even a zellage backsplash for John's coffee corner. By the way, I've linked to all of my tiles, doors, faucets, light fixtures, and everything else on girlandtheword.com. Please head there after this video if you want links to anything. Speaking of faucets, we chose this amazing White House antique brass faucet with a matching sprayer, soap dispenser, and other practical hardware. I think it brings so much charm to the kitchen. Of course, we also had to go with a fire clay farmhouse style sink. I love a good apron sink because it just makes the kitchen feel so much homier. Next, let me show you all the storage that we have in this space. I asked for slow close hinges and as many pull out drawers as I can with the space, and they did not disappoint. I can't wait to fill up these drawers with our favorite tools and appliances. If you're wondering where the appliances are, here I am standing next to our freakishly tall fridge. The fridge, ranges, and dishwasher cannot be installed until the flooring arrives, so they're just sitting quietly in their boxes right now. Hopefully, everything will actually be installed by the next video. Here we have the living room right next to the kitchen. This was the room that won us over when we first saw the house. This room had so much potential, and it's been such a joy watching our vision come to life. We sealed the window next to the sliding door to create space for shelving later on, next to the fireplace. The back door is going to be replaced with aluminum bifolds to turn this into kind of an indoor-outdoor space in the summer, where we'll be swimming in that green lagoon in the back. Yuck, I know, I'm just kidding. The pool electricals gave us a huge headache these past few months, so we'll budget to clean it up as soon as we can, before we breed some sort of mutant in the backyard. Yikes. Moving on, here's a better look at the fireplace around that we designed. I can't wait to have all the cozy moments with my family around this fireplace. What a blessing. Looking up, you'll also see that the old shiplap has been smoothed out and the recess lights are in. We're also going to sand the beams down until smooth for a cleaner, more modern look. Next to the living room and kitchen is the laundry room. My favorite detail is definitely the herringbone brick flooring. It's just something that I've always wanted for my laundry room, and I'm grateful that this vision came to life. Over here, we also have a cabinet for storage and some room for the stacked washer and dryer, of course. All right, so right now we are in the laundry room, as you already know. This empty wall, I really wanted them to install some sort of like shelving for a pantry, but that didn't happen. So instead, um, it all worked out because we're gonna install something to hang our clothes on to hang dry instead of 
drying it in the dryer. Oh, you know what I'm missing? I'm missing like those laundry hampers, the ones that have different sections for like your colored clothes and your white clothes. Maybe that will go here. And then on this wall, maybe I can put like, like sort of a back entryway mudroom situation where there's hangers for your clothes and keys and maybe like a, a list of things I need to get at the grocery store. Am I like overthinking this space? I don't know. But there's an empty wall here, so I gotta do something with it, right? So this space looks entirely different because from this angle, there used to be a fireplace here that we sealed off. And there also used to be a door over here that led to the backyard. And we thought it was just a weird placement to put a door, so we sealed it off and just made it a dining room. Behind me, this used to not be here. This is a storage room now, whereas before the whole area was a giant living room. But we thought we would rather have more storage. Next, we have the powder room. To be honest, I was not a huge fan of this space before, but now that it's all empty, I'm starting to see so much potential for this space. So for this wall, I was thinking of putting some storage. As always, you can never have too much storage. Oh, you can hear them working upstairs right now. Um, but right here used to be a shower and we took it out because we thought we don't need like a third shower pretty much. I would rather have more storage, so we're gonna either put cabinets or like corner shelves, something that we can store all of our tissue paper and vanity goods. Now, let's head over to the guest bathroom. I think the layout of this bathroom changed like three times since I designed it because I wanted to fit both a freestanding tub and a shower without it looking too crowded, and I finally found a design that worked. Here's another beautiful Zellige tile design that I absolutely love. The ceiling shower head really elevates the space, as well as this tub that I found on Wayfair. This whole tub and faucet system cost me less than an iPhone, so worth it. Also, the vanity that we chose came with a beautiful apron sink. Are you even surprised at this point? And finally, here's what it might look like after the sconces are installed. Okay, so another empty wall that I'm looking to decorate is this one right next to the tub. I'm thinking of putting some plants, of course, plants that could tolerate a level of shade, um, as well as maybe some bath bombs and some tub related goodies. <laughs> All right, so this is the home gym. I'm so excited to finally have a space where we can work out. Um, let me run you through what this place used to look like. This is the before. And here we are now. It doesn't look from this angle like anything changed, but over here, this used to be a door leading to the backyard. And now we've sealed it up and we turned it into a closet. This wall over here used to have a closet, um, but we sealed it up and expanded the guest bathroom. When we finally move in, I'm thinking of putting like a mirror here and maybe like a squat rack over here and maybe like a TV or something over here. And since we're gonna be on the ground working out a lot, maybe I'll have like some nice wallpaper on the ceiling, something interesting to look at when you're doing, doing uh, crunches or whatever. <laughs> like whatever people who work out do. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is gonna be such a sanctuary for us. I'm so excited to decorate it. We only have the sconces up right now and I'm 
probably going to not have the mixture because we want to add a few guys and it kind of goes too high up for a fixture. It might like bump into the fixture. So just the sconces and the recess lining for this room. Um, I might like put shiplap on this wall. Let me know what you think about shiplap. I've learned to like really love it within the past six months or so, but I used to think it looks a little tacky. Ah! <laughs> don't, don't quote me on that. I don't mean to be judgmental, but now I'm in love with it. I love a vertical ship lap in particular. So that's the master bedroom. Here we have the glorious master bathroom. I think this room gave me the most headaches out of all the spaces that we worked on, but it's coming along so well. It used to have a very pink, very 80s style tub with jets, as well as a landline next to the toilet. But we demoed everything and opted for a dual shower. The floor to ceiling tiling allows it to turn into a steam shower if we want it to be and this little swivel glass allows for better ventilation. Now is the part where I'm gonna get super real with you. All the updates might look fun, exciting, and maybe even luxurious, but the fact is that this process has been pretty grueling for me. I've been stretched and challenged in ways that completely took me out of my comfort zone, and one big lesson that I've learned is that God views perfection very differently than we do. When humans think of perfection, we think of things that are outwardly excellent and beautiful. We think of performances that are flawlessly executed. We think of accolades and achievements and outward expressions of excellence. But God considers perfection a faultless state of the heart. For example, I've always been taught that Jesus was perfect, but what that translated to me was that he never made a harmless mistake. Yet, if you think about it, he was fully human and had to learn all the things that humans learn. Surely he stumbled as a toddler while learning to walk. Surely he had to learn woodwork in order to be a carpenter. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that Jesus came out of the womb knowing all of these skills right off the bat. He had to learn. Yet in learning and stumbling and trying again, he never gave in to sin. And that is why God the Father considers him blameless. The God of the Bible cares less about outward perfection than he does about the state of our hearts. So as I try to wrap up on this home renovation, I'm going to remind myself over and over again to not idolize perfection, but put my energy into being right with God and others. After all, our house is only meant to be a tool to show the love of God to all people. How foolish would I be to focus on my house more than the people that I'm called to love. <laughs>